Hello, it's me, your lady Chanaka, before she gets ready. And I want to say good morrow to everyone. I am getting uh, ready for the Renaissance Fair. I'm not fully up in drag yet. I just wanted to uh, show you guys, because a lot of you guys asked last year, how do I do my makeup? And this is not an official makeup tutorial, which I'll probably put one on later on if I get the chance. But this is like, you know, just uh, a little show of what I do before I actually go to the fair and get all snazzy and stuff. And um, lately you guys have been seeing me with my um, drag already on and not already painted. So I just want to show you a little of what I do before I apply the color on. And if I get the chance, I'll actually do the coloring of my face, the painting of my face, um, before my time is over here. Because right now, it's morning time, my birds are sleeping, all the other birds outside are sleeping. I am constantly checking the time. Um, I'm almost all dressed up. You see here I have all my jewelry on. And um, I'm just waiting to get painted. A lot of this takes um, letting my stuff set in, which I'll show you in just a bit. And before I even get to anything, I just want to say happy birthday to two people that are, I would say, very important in my life. <laughs> One of them is my got sister and cousin Josie happy birthday Josie and my boss and friend my Virgoan uh, spiritual sister Rosalisa and happy birthday to both of you I hope you guys have a great year which I'm forecasting it could be a great year if you keep it positive not too positive you know with the rose color glasses okay so <laughs> Happy birthday. Um, so I start off um, usually putting on foundation, but today, today I'm going to start off differently. I am going to actually do um, my eyebrows because those usually take a lot longer to dry. Lately, Lady Chamaka does a mystical mistress of the tarot. So I want her to be very mystical, kind of dune like, like the Bene Gesserits. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to block them out. And before I even get to blocking them out, I have to glue them down. Um, and tonight, I'm going to have a I'm working with a mirror at the same time here. I'm going to block them. Well, I'm going to comb them out so I can see how much do they need to be trimmed. I have the music playing in the background. I, I'm like on a, I woke up with Lady Gaga on my head. Applause. And, um... Let's put that on loop. <laughs> Don't you ever do that? Like, you know, you wake up with a song in your head and you just have to hear it throughout the day, all day, and it's catchy. So, I'm going to kind of comb it. Sometimes my eyebrows tend to go a little longer than normal. And see this edge over here is already long. I have to... Just I'm gonna have to change. I'm gonna have to cut that at some point because it does become troublesome. I'll be right back. Um. All right. So I'm gonna just snip this a little bit up here, and I'm using like these nose hair clippers type of scissors. I'm gonna trim that. And anything else that I see needs trimming. All right, so this butch queen is ready for the tacking down now. All right, so now I have to comb them down. Since so not even if you comb it down, if you're gonna go this route, you can see if any of your hairs need to be 
trimmed up and I'm seeing already I might have to trim something up so I'm gonna just go in there a little bit and just trim trim and trim a little bit more uh, I have too much shadow happening here I guess I'm okay so the other important thing to do is that your face is all washed at least um, maybe a half an hour before you apply the makeup just because you want the emollients your natural oils of your skin to really come out after you walk like after you wash your face you tend to wash away your emollients uh, the oils from your face which you really need for uh, the foundation to set in um, and just mix with the complexion of your skin and stuff so um, what I'm gonna do here since I already washed my face and you can see it's nice and shiny that's the natural skin color I mean skin oil um, that's a few tend to have oily skin like myself, I guess. All right, so while it's come down, I'm just gonna take the spare gum. I got the Krylon spare gum, so you can use whatever spare gum you want. I just used it because Manila Luzon used it in her makeup tutorial. <laughs> Manila Luzon from Season 3 RuPaul's Drag Race. And please don't leave in the common area that I should be on RuPaul's Drag Race. I met RuPaul one time. Yes, it was at the end of the night at the Boy Bar in the East Village. And she was waiting for her money after her show. And I was a bar back. And... I said to her, well, I didn't say anything to her. She came up to me. She was like, well, hello there. And I was high. And she was like, do you know who I am? I was like, no. <laughs> Even though she performed that night. She's so tall, RuPaul, and sassy. And she was like, I'm RuPaul. I'm the next sup supermodel or sensation or superstar. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Not that I thought she was delusional, but I just didn't know what her angle was, what her game was. And look at her now. I don't go around saying I'm sensational, I'm a superstar, but I do feel like a superstar already. So, uh, alright, so now that I put it down, I'm combing it out, back up, and um, as f flat as possible as I can make it. Um, the glue, the spare gum helps to, ha helps the, um, I have to catch these other little ones here. The spare gum helps to tack it down, the, your hair. I like to do this instead of plucking or shaping my eyebrows because I love my eyebrows, that's one. The other is that it's so much more easier to create styles for your eyebrows if they're blocked out and you do this method. Now, I've only been doing this for about a year or two, two years, and I had a drag mother at one time. I almost got into drag at a very, very early age, but I was too scared. And now that I have no ovaries to do this, <laughs> my testicles are all in their sockets. Um, no, um, I, you know, I, I want to express my feminine self using drag, and it's perfect. And um, I want to keep my eyebrows. So, so your your eyebrow becomes very tacky. You want to. After you put the stuff on there, you just want to tack it just the way I did. Maybe even roll your eyebrow brush over it. And now it's kind of tacky so that after it dries, you want to let it dry, set in there, set in there for at least a good 
I don't know, 10 minutes. Um, it's still going to be a little sticky and it's porous. So once the uh, you're ready for the next phase of blocking it out, you're all set. But at this point, we're going to take a break, a little bit of a break, um, while I do the other eyebrow. And then I'll continue this little shing ding that I started. Um, so this is set in already and it's going to dry up f for a little bit longer so i'm going to give it you know about seven more minutes i should put on a timer but i don't know where my phone is um but i'm looking at the time i'm i'm keeping track and it's 5 28 in the morning and now i need to put on the foundation now um i don't know if you see this but there's more, you know, there's this, no, you probably can't see it because of the light. My hair over here is a little longer and it needs to be trimmed more, so I'm not even going to trim it now. But usually when you do the spur gum, don't put too much. If you go over, you know, your eyebrow line, that's fine. What you can do is um, uh, you can probably take something and take it off with some water. I just, gonna, I'm, I usually leave it on and let it dry. And then when I get to the next stage, I kind of fudge it. Sometimes it cracks or something. You know, I wish there was some pros prosthetics out there. There probably are. I just have to Google it to block your eyebrows so that it'll look like, you know, you're naturally, like, hairless on your eyebrows. I will love that. But for now, I like to do it this way. I never try the glue stick. Some girls use glue stick. And, um, I don't know. The... This is more manageable doing the spur gum. This is my spur gum, my lucky spur gum. So let's do to let's go to. Uh, we're gonna go to the um, foundation. So I don't use like. So this is the Renaissance fair I'm doing this for. I'm not doing. I'm not doing this for the stage. What I use is. Some regular girl cosmetics. And um, I use NYC right now. Uh, smooth skin liquid makeup. And these go on sale every now and then. And it's like the best thing. I think NYC smooth skin liquid makeup um, is the bomb. <laughs> Just because... The, um, consistency of it stays on your face, like, forever. And at the Renaissance Fair, um, I have to make my skin look as natural as possible. And this does that. And I can apply a lot of stuff on it after it's in my face and it's already set in. I'm looking for my, if you see that I'm kind of lost here, I'm looking for my brushes. All right, so I found my brushes, and my brushes were right there in front of me, and I just couldn't see them because of the lighting. <laughs> All right, so I, ha I don't have traditional makeup brushes. Like I said before, I have a theater um, background, and um, I have my painting brushes that I use that I, well, I never really use for painting. So they're a little hard, but I have pretty much have a tough skin. Um, and um, so this is what I use to put on the, um, apply the makeup. So, um, excuse me for being such a big girl here. Um, so I usually put a little bit of the foundation in here or in my, the palm of my hand. Um, but for today's purposes, I'm putting in the cap because it works. And so I, here it goes. And now I just... Uh, paint it really all the way in and use my mirror here uh, I start off with the eyes because usually I have from being tired um, and not getting any sleep I do I want that to set in first so this is kind of like a base and I don't do like that max stuff cosmetics like professional makeup artists do because I just don't have the money for that if I did I would 
Um, and I think it, it works just as fine, at least for me it does. Maybe for you, you'll need that. Uh, so I don't prime my face with any foundation special primers. Um, so I apply the, founda the foundation over here in my eye without touching the eyebrows because that's still drying. And I really get in there into every crevice. I paint my face. So when you see me on the videos and I say I painted my face or nobody can see the paint on my face, I'm literally painting my face here. Uh, great thing about liquid foundation over the stick foundation is that it's liquid and it spreads out more and you can control exactly how much of the foundation is going to block your face. So I get into, for those of you with beards and mustaches, um, it's even easier too to apply the foundation with the brush because, you know, these are hairs and it's hair on hair getting into like these little crevices here. I don't know if you can see that. So um, I need more foundation. So the other thing is that, you know, when you do drag, um, especially because of the photos and stuff and the videos and you want to really apply the foundation on there especially if you have to be in drag all day or do this makeup all day so if you're doing this like for everyday wear you know I don't put that much on especially with this liquid foundation well sometimes I do but um <laughs> It lasts all day, and then by the end of the day, I don't know if you guys noticed the difference between my morning look and the evening look um, when I do my little videos at the fair. Um, what happens is that I, I'm putting a little dabs now up here. What happens is that at the end of the day, the makeup is absorbed by my pores. So it's, um, it looks like you know you're looking at my skin without any makeup so that's the beauty of uh, and I don't have to retouch it throughout the day um, because I like the the natural moisture showing through also um, if I'm sweating and it's usually a hot day at the fair so I really you know I get in here um, I'm going around the eyebrows I dabbed a little bit here and there around my eyes. I mean, I, yeah, around this part here, my cheek. Uh, and let it dry a little bit. And then I just kind of continue stroking around until I have this desired coverage. My nose is also important for me to have the foundation on because I'll, this, you know, some of the illusion goes into there, a lot of it. I think a good, like, 25% to 35% is nose of, con of really, you know, bringing together the illusion of being a full-fledged woman uh, in drag. So I tend to apply a lot more besides my eyes on my nose. All right, so I think I'm done here. So now I just top off, close up the foundation. I won't need this brush again, so I'm just going to wipe it up a little bit before I can actually wash it. And now, now I want to blend it in, so I'm going to take a sponge, and I normally don't do the sponge, but I don't know. I feel like if I use a sponge, it's gonna it starts absorbing some of the still drying foundation 
but I use it and I use it very lightly on my face and I just blend in very softly I watch and avoid really digging the foundation into my beard because then it makes it it kicks it in there the cut the makeup and I can't get it out when I want to it at the end of my finished look so I'm looking at the time right now and I still have time uh, to probably apply makeup um, but usually this is like a whole ordeal that uh, I even include lashes now this year. Um, last this last year when I was doing this, um, lashes were so hard for me to do that I did them every now and then for special occasions. And I just noticed that I really didn't do foundation over here on my um, skin. Oh wait, I need to do my ears too. So with just a little bit, you know, whatever is left over of your makeup, you want to go inside your ears. Just so that, you know, it just matches a little bit. If anything, with the rest of your makeup. Now my costume covers up a lot of my neck an ear area so I'm usually I usually don't concern myself with a lot of all that stuff that I just did that's why I only put a little bit on but for you you might want to put a little bit more than what I just put on spend a little more time in there uh, so where's my sponge here's my sponge I'm just gonna go in there just a little bit lightly uh, See, now it's sticking very well. Now I have like a base on my lips for lipstick. Now, if you do drag and you're a boy, straight or gay, whatever that you desire, and you're worried that, you know, somebody's not going to like you or be attracted to you once they find out your little secret, don't be. Um, I used to be. I think that's one of the reasons why I didn't do drag. Um, I find at the Renaissance Fair that... A lot of people are so attracted to me, men and women, in drag. Not that I were like Kai Kai in drag, um, <laughs> which means have sex in drag. I've never done that, and it's not like a fantasy I have. There's many people out there that have that fantasy. To me, it's like, I don't know, like a clown wanting to have sex. I, I don't like clown sex. It's kind of sounds horrific, and visually it's not appealing to me. So <laughs> I wear Alme. Alme tends to be pretty good in terms of fine powders um, to set in your foundation. So I go and get in there right away, and I put the um, I set it in. Now. This is my routine. Your routine could be totally different. And I'm always switching it up since I'm still learning and still remembering what my drag mother taught me. I guess I can call her my drag mother since she was an influence and a big part of my little club years and upbringing at one point. And I did shows with her. And La Escuelita. Alright, so here I go. And I don't put a lot, just enough so that 
it takes off the shine and it just really gives me more color than the foundation pale color. Uh, keeps my face from getting sticky also. And when your skin like soaks it up and your emollients, your natural oil starts to take over. Um, your your makeup starts to glow. It's like you have a second skin on, and I love that part. <sighs> All right, so now, just like some of these RuPaul Drag Race girls, Nella Luzon, thank you very much. Um, They just suggest or they use uh, Krylon eyebrow plastic, which looks like this. It's kind of funny. It's like, to me, it looks like baby penis because it's all like, I don't know if you see that. Can you see that? Anyway, um, it's all pinkish and it's kind of like shrimp color, a little flesh color. So I don't take much. I take a you know a little bit, and um, I just rub the top so I can warm it up, so it becomes soft. And I try not to play with it too much because it could get messy, like it has already. Take the eyebrow wax and really apply it gently as possible, but firmly so that it really gets into the grooves of your eyebrows. And it needs to get into the grooves of your eyebrows because you wanna create a flat surface that you can paint on and put your makeup on. So you really wanna get it in there um, and don't force it on because it can backfire on you. You'll have a mess and you'll have to probably start your face all over again. So there it goes, it's in there. I have applied as much as possible, uh, I think. So now I'm going to go in there with my finger and kind of flatten it out, flatten it out more lightly. Now I don't know if you see this little crease that I have here on the side building up. That's from the glue. I should have cleaned it up, but... I really don't care because I might just put my eyebrow over it if I, well, I'm not doing eyebrows, but I just might put some color over it and fudge it. I might just take a little more make uh, of this wax, so put it on to some of the places that I felt needed, needs uh, the definition of line to be smoothed out more. Uh, the worst that you can do with this is uh, create these cracks. These are you know illusions of cracks in your face where the sh the light hits it and and shadows start forming. Um, because and then it's your makeup starts looking flawed and. Um, People take you less seriously. They don't look at you as professional or caring about your craft. You start looking like you're a party city bitch. That's actually a comment from Fifi O'Hara to Sharon Needles on RuPaul's Drag Race season five, I think it was, or season four, season four. Go back to party city where you belong, Bitch, 
Sharon Needles is not liking that statement. Fifi O'Hara was just full of hate and jealous of Sharon. But Sharon showed her. She won the title of RuPaul's Super Mo Well, next. Drag Superstar. I think that's the title. Anyway, so, um, I think I put enough. I'm not gonna do it up too much because I might just ruin the makeup as you probably could see right now. I'm just gonna wipe up some of the excess. Now this looks really good. See, sometimes I have problems. It's either some weeks it's this eyebrow or this eyebrow. You might have the same problem. Something's gonna give you a problem and you just have to, you know, allow yourself time for problems to, ha to occur when you're doing your eyebrows. A any part of your makeup too, oh my God. All right, so I'm done with that. Um, so, I'm gonna let that dry there for a little bit and I'm gonna do some contouring on my face. Contouring is when you apply a darker color to outline your face. Um, so that certain parts of your face is more pronounced than others. Um, this is where the illusions really start, really starts to happen. And I start off with a brown bronzer um, to do my contouring, because it gives me that little shimmering, that, well, it gives me that shimmering, flawless look, a day glow look throughout the day, and, um, I get into, I start off with the outline here of my hairline, um, I have that widow's peak, so I get in there as much as I can, and I keep going. Usually you want to do something darker than your skin tone, not too dark, like black or brown, dark brown. Some drag queens go that route and do a dark brown. I don't suggest it. Now I have a beard, so I won't do like my cheekbones as other girls really do and pr to pronounce this. Um, I kind of go into my beard line here because my beard line is the definition line there makes my cheekbones pop out so I usually shave them to do that to give me that effect but you know every now and then I'll go in and out a little more bit more you want to just cut that in there And that's what gives you definition on your face. When you're taking pictures, you see that. You might not see it right away, but when it comes to picture time, you will. Something about the cameras and lighting and stuff that uh, it picks up the lighter parts of your face you know, that information and the defining areas, which is the dark areas. Sometimes I just go over here just to accentuate. Just to give some definition. Now some girls do stuff with their Adam's apple. I don't. Sometimes I go over, over here and cut into it. Sometimes I do. I, I'll go in here and just... Anything to just block out the that 5 o'clock shadow. 
Now, I don't mind too much having the 5 o'clock shadow um, show through just because it's the Renaissance Fair. And back then, in the old days, you're everyone. If you were not, if you weren't royalty, you were a peasant. So, and everyone, most, a lot of people really didn't care about how they looked. Now, I love this bronzer on my ear, just because it makes my ears shimmer. At least uh, um, the ridges, and uh, when the light hits it, it looks like I'm majestic in some way, because the bronzer really like highlights uh, the light picks up um, these little ridge areas and and there's like this highlight and it makes it look almost like gold and what I'm using here for those of you who are questioning this is LA colors bronzer I picked that up at the dollar store yeah the dollar stores are becoming very handy lately so now I use this to also define my nose. So since I'm not a man, I have to, I mean, since I'm not a woman, I have to give the illusion that I have a slender nose. So I get in here, I get in down here. You probably can't see it right now, but um, uh, I try to make two parallel lines and leave the open space down over here. And now I have a lot of this stuff on, so now I have to blend it out. Alright, so I'm doing good time. So I'm just going to blend, have to blend that in. Now, for this part of your nose, I used to blend out because, and not too much. Because you want to keep the defining line there. So now, Manila Luzon usually, I'm just using her as a reference because she's a celebrity and star and stuff, and I don't know, you know, she even says it, you know, you have to develop your own style, but um, she does this clown white thing where she just kind of rubs it into her makeup just to give some sh the illusion of shine and the supple look, and uh, that doesn't really work for me, so... What I'm doing today is I'm using, oh, and to also block out her eyes. It just doesn't work for me. I'm going to try today the um, eyeshadow base by NYX. So I don't know how much that's going to really help, but uh, I'm going to use a paintbrush to apply this. And I have to block out the um, eyebrows now so I'm just gonna I took a little bit and I'm gonna try to use it all throughout my eye brows I find that the paint doesn't really help and doesn't it gets messy um, it dries up it cracks um, well it doesn't really really dry up that's my other point here. This base that I'm using here um, is a good primer for um, just regular eyeshadow powder or maybe even cream. And this is a cream that I'm applying here. And so far it's doing a really good job at blocking my eyebrows. You can still see them, but it's they're blocked and once I put on some foundation color on it some powder and then foundation you'll see 
All right, so now that that's, that, that's down and it's acting like a primer, I'm going to take some foundation, just a little bit, not too much, and mix it in there. Actually, I think I'm going to use a sponge for this. I was going to use the brush, but I think a sponge is called for here. And just lightly get that in there. You don't want to mix it up. You just want to dab it on. Dab, 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 dab. I think I have too much light on here. Sorry. Now the camera's adjusting and I'm out of focus. Here we go. So there we go. Dab it, dab it, dab it, do. Eventually the cream does this thing and and um, and dries up enough for you to apply more makeup on top of it on my face. Um, oh, the other important thing to do is apply this cream makeup stuff. I'll show you in a little bit also. I'll do it later, but you know, have a line coming down because this increases the, um, well, builds up the drama, the illusion of having such a fine nose. Okay. Just a thin line, nothing too big. No broad strokes, dudes. So, I don't know if I f really f finished that conversation about people liking your drag. So, yeah, my experience at the fair is that, you know, you have the people who like you for an, an entertainer. And then there's people who will like you for the fantasy aspect of it. And like I said before, I do this because I like the entertainment part, but I also like to express my femininity through it. So, uh, there are some people that really like it, you know, they have some soul and heart for people who are transgender and who are expressing themselves this way. So, I don't know if you can see that now. I have that defining line there, and I have the white working for me and I have it all blocked out so in my next um, part like the good drag queen I am is I, I'm gonna set this in now that it's dried up a little bit well actually I have to set it in with some powder a lighter powder but I'm not gonna do that yet I just I'm just gonna do another um, contouring if I could find it and I'm just gonna contour some more with this darker bronzer, my nose. So, I'm gonna use the actual little brush that came with my bronzer. This one is darker. I think you can see that. And I start as much as possible in the corner of the, my eye socket. And I try to really be gentle because I'm an American Indian and my nose is kind of crooked, so I have like this little bump thing here happening. And if I'm not careful, I can make the line like bend so it looks like somebody punched my nose. And I don't want 
to look like I have a crooked nose. So I go down as far as I can where I give that illusion as much as possible. And I don't do it too dramatic like some of these other girls do. I mean, you want to do you want to go very dramatic if you're going to be on stage and you're at the club. But you don't want to do that for a day look. It's kind of scary. It's very clown-like. I appreciate being a woman during the daylight. So I do try to do it as soft and feminine as possible. And keep it drag queen-like at, at the same time. That's why I like Manila Luzon. Her and her ex-lover, who's passed away now, Sahara Davenport. Um really own that realness, like that everyday look realness in their drag. And they still do. Well, at least Manila does. Um, legends. So, there it goes. Mm. I think I need to work on the other side a little bit. Do you like? All right, so I'm just gonna bl brush it out just a little bit down, and you don't want to like spread it out because um, then it's gonna give you the give the appearance. You want to like maybe brush it out just a little bit, but not a lot, because then then it's gonna look like you have a wide nose. And I already have a wide nose. So now I'm going to have to set this in with powder. Loose powder. And this is a uh, the lightest of lightest loose powders. It's an ivory white. And it's by Airspun. I picked it up at CVS. It's like 10 bucks, 11 bucks. Uh, this is naturally neutral. So, I want to dab it in, you don't, I used to like, really kind of like, dig it in, because I was kind of doing it incorrectly, but now that I know what I'm doing, I just dab it in, enough, and then to my eyes, just to set in the emollients in the creams. Beautiful, right? Um, I picked this color because I want to still give that white illusion and I'll go over it later with the other Alme powder. But, um, just get in there, girl. Get all the way in there. This video is going a little long, longer than I expected. So now that I have that initial powder there, I'm just going to use another sponge and get some of that creamy white uh, mixed eyeshadow under in my under eyes and the inside of my eyes just to prime my eyes for makeup later which I'm not gonna have a chance to do cuz I'm running out of time now uh, let's see what time is it yeah I have a half an hour more I don't know I'll see what I can do girls oh man this is so much better than the clown white Manila, I hope you're listening. <laughs> this is so much better than the clown white that you recommended. I keep on picking on Manila also because um, I had her on my podcast. Uh, you should look it up. It's episode number 25 of the Oral Fix podcast. And... 
Manila's from, she lives in the city. I don't think she's from the city, but she um, gave us a great interview on the Oral Fix podcast. A pleasure to talk to her. Very kind and courteous. I'm going to go back in there and set it in with the powder. Which I'm going to have to take out the little grid on top of the powder because not enough comes out. So now I have this nice look on my face. Some drag queens say that a lot, that the blending, it's all in the blending. I think it's all in the layering. You have to layer it. You really do. The more layers that you have, the more the illusion is going to really take effect. And um, and when I put my makeup on, I just love to feel that I'm pampering myself, that I'm beautiful, that I'm that I really care about myself. So it's almost like a meditation. Um, so you know, I suggest that you find the love in it for yourself as well. I'm, I'm like out on the go, so I'm going to complete this look while I'm at the fair. And so if you're not going to see it um, in the morning video, you'll probably see it in the evening video, how, what the makeup, you know, the final process looks like. Um, so I'm just going to go into my face a little bit more with the Alme darker powder. Um, just to take out the sting of the contrast. So there we go. Lady Chamaka of the Shire is ready to get her butt to the Shire. Now I have to put on my eyelashes and I'm not going to do this for the video. That'll be a different tutorial, I guess, or I don't know video tutorial blah 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 i'm just doing this because i like being on the camera <laughs> and <laughs> i want to get as popular as the next person on the youtube channels um and i really want to talk about myself too and and inspire other people to just be as stunning as i am and to join me in my little dance and song um of life so um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, this video did go over, and um, <laughs> and uh, watch out for my looks. I might put any pictures that um, I take or other people take of me at the end of this video, so you can see what the finished look looks like. But for now, this is the foundation level. You know, this is the base of it all. And um, you know, God damn it, I am beautiful. I am something. I am part of this world. I have something to offer to this world. Ooh, my hair's looking really nice too today. I colored it the other day, golden brown. Yes, by Gardner. Gardner's Nutrice. It was on sale. So, um, this is what your tips allow me to do. <laughs> Every time you tip me at the Renaissance Fair when you come for a reading, I'm a mystic's way. Come and find me. Get a reading. I've been doing this for almost, not the drag, but the tarot reading for 30 years. 30 plus years, really. So, um, you know, I was taught how to read tarot cards and use my psychic intuition since I was very, very, very young. And, um, and I love doing it in drag. <laughs> Stop. Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> 
Now go out there and be fabulous. Okay, I will. Bye.